So, a little while back I had this idea to do a video about the top 5 best and worst White Walker apocalypse bases of Westeros. Because with the others currently lurking beyond the wall, it's highly possible that we could see a mass invasion like this before the series wraps up. But when it came down to ranking the safest to the least safest, I found it almost impossible with everything you'd need to factor in. And it wasn't until I brought up the idea to you guys on Facebook that I thought, well hey, you have some great ideas, so why don't I just let you guys decide? The situation is simple. The wall is gone. Whether it be by magic, global warming, or Hodor headbutting it too hard, it doesn't matter. It's gone. And the Others and Whites are beelining directly into Westeros. Since we only know so much about the Others, the details of what an invasion would look like was left up to each voter. The only other rule I'm going to enforce here is that you can't just escape by boat to Essos or somewhere, because, well, where the hell's the fun in that? I asked you guys to rank the following Westeros capitals from 1 to 10 based on two factors. 1. Protection, which is important in any zombie apocalypse for obvious reasons. And 2. Sustainability, because without the ability to get food, your protection isn't going to do you very much good. And how I added up the points looked just like this. So without further ado, let's dive into the top 5 best and worst White Walker apocalypse bases in Westeros. For 5th worst, we have River Run. So if you were to take the scoring system I used and made it so that the places with scores in the positive were feasible hideout, then there's actually six places that would make the cut. But with a score of only plus two, it's still vastly inferior to the top five on this list. While it does have a great supply of fresh water and fish, the trick of pulling up its rear levees to make itself an island might not work against enemies that could probably freeze water at least to some degree, if their ability to shatter steel says anything. For fifth best, we have the Eerie. This is one that definitely surprised me a little bit at first, as I thought it would be ranked a fair bit higher. I mean, it's high up, it's secluded, you could cut off the narrow pathways leading up to it, and... Uh, yeah, you'd probably just starve to death. The unique positioning and structure of the Eerie is kind of a double-edged sword. You're probably going to be safe up there, but no way of getting back down means no way to get yourself more food after you run out of the very small amount that you could store there. But assuming you only had a small group to feed and enough time to slowly bring up the food beforehand, the Eerie could be just fine, at least for a little while. For the fourth worst, we have Casterly Rock. The home of the rich Lannisters really only has two things going for it here. One is that it's on the coast, making fish a source of food, and two, it's a fortress atop a huge rock. But those vaults full of gold, silver, and gems are going to look pretty good to the ever-keen opportunists, and while it won't be as bad as the looting that will go on in one other place on this list, Good luck trying to fend off violent thieves and freaky ice zombies. Fourth best, Sunspear. I think Sunspear got this high on the list based on its geography alone. I mean, honestly, if I was a White Walker, I wouldn't even bother with this place. Think about it. First, you'd need to walk all the way to the south, which is fine. But then you'd need to get through the bottleneck of the Dornish marches. Then you'd need to cross a desert that's hot even in the coldest winters. And then finally, you'd need to get through the triple-gated system at the castle. If I was one of the residents there, I would be like, you know what, you can just turn me into a white. You went through enough trouble to get here, you earned it. Rounding out the third worst is Highgarden. The capital of the Reach is full of food, but opposite to Sunspear, its entire problem comes down to location. In the middle of a field, it's only a matter of time before you're surrounded and overwhelmed. But hey, look on the bright side. At least you'll get to die somewhere pretty. Third best, Storm's End. It's the only place on this list that was rumored to be designed by the legendary Brandon the Builder. It's even said to have magic spells similar to the ones in the wall. But even without that, Storm's End is a behemoth of defense. Walls 10 stories high and 40 to 80 feet thick with a huge place to store food. It's definitely earned itself a spot in the top three. The second worst, King's Landing. The capital of Westeros houses a massive 500,000 civilians with seven gaping entry points into the city. Trying to stave off a White Walker attack here is like trying to babysit three hyperactive children while there's a fire in the kitchen and a burglar climbing in the window. Good luck, because you're gonna need it. Our runner-up for best is Dragonstone. It sits on a gold mine of dragonglass, the substance that can kill White Walkers in their tracks. Not only that, but Dragonstone is an island. It's one thing to freeze a little bit of fresh water around River Run, but if the White Walkers could freeze a couple hundred kilometers of salt water, then they would have used it to get around the wall a long time ago. So they would have to get out there by boats one at a time. But regardless of this being the only place with a concrete offense against the enemy, there's still one place that you guys voted higher than this. But what takes the spot for the worst White Walker hideout? Winterfell. It should come as no surprise that this would be the worst place to be in a White Walker attack. Now, season two spoiler warning, but Winterfell is in ruins. It's not even livable, let alone defensible right now. Pair that with the fact that it's in the backyard of the others? Yeah, sorry Starks, but it's not much of a contest. It probably would have gone above King's Landing if it was still intact, but right now it wouldn't keep you safe from a pack of wild dogs, let alone an army of the undead. So what does this leave us for for the best? 
Well, it's Pike. Just like Dragonstone, Pike is on an island, but its advantage over it comes from being much further off the coast and much, much higher up. The fortress itself is on a series of islands, with a large gate curving around the mainland and nothing but rope bridges to connect it all together. If they get through the gate, just cut the ropes. It even has its food storage facilities strategically placed at the outermost island, so you could move around several times if you needed to. It's already sectioned off into convenient little bunkers. Dragonstone might have the means to kill the White Walkers, but you could only keep that up for so long before they overran you, whereas here you would probably never have to fight them. What sets Pike apart is that they would need not only a fleet of ships to get a sizable amount of them out there, but also some crazy rock climbing skills to scale the cliffs to get to you before you could just drop something on them and knock them back down again. With all the struggle that it would take for a White Walker to get to you, it's easy to see why you guys voted Pike as number one. So this was the democratically elected list of the best and worst White Walker apocalypse bases in Westeros. Let me know how you guys would have ranked them in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the Danzy Reviews Facebook page if you want to participate in more stuff like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!